What's up, YouTube, and what is up, Raider Nation? This is Wi-Fi Willie of the Raiders Rundown, and the Raiders need to hit up J.C. Jackson right now and get him over to Vegas from the New England Patriots. J.C. Jackson was interviewed by Boston NBC this past Tuesday, and he said the Patriots have not been in contact with him since last season about his contract. Is he going to be extended and play in New England in the future? It's totally up for grabs, and he said some even crazier stuff than that. This dude straight up said, I guess they feel like they don't need me. I guess I can't be that important to them. I know I am, but they're not showing me. So this guy made some pretty bold claims. Obviously, that's something you say when you want to get out of that organization. He's obviously not that optimistic that he's going to get a big time deal done or else he wouldn't be saying crap like that. He's not going to say some stuff like trashing his employer and expect to get promoted and get a raise. We can't do that at our jobs. I highly doubt JC Jackson could pull that off at his job. But at the end of the day, he is a really great cornerback, arguably the best available in free agency so maybe this guy can say whatever he wants and maybe he's trying to get new england to make a decision right here right now and try to motivate them to get a deal done but he has a connection with Josh McDaniels. He has a connection with Dave Ziegler. He knows both of these guys from his time in New England. He's played there for four to five years. And if he is going to go somewhere where he already has some familiarity, it's going to be Vegas. It's going to be with McDaniels and Ziegler. So we got to pick up the phone and call this guy right now. Let's get him a big time deal. Let's get him over to Vegas. Yeah, I know we only have $20 million in salary cap, but I would much rather spend that money on a stud corner like JC Jackson. We're probably not going to get Casey Hayward. Casey Hayward is up there in age. You know, he's in, he's, he's about 33 years old. The main reason why he came to the Raiders last year was to work with Gus Bradley. And Gus Bradley is gone with the Colts now, right? So if anything, Casey Hayward's more likely to go with the Colts. And by the way, he really did come here just for Gus Bradley because guess what? His contract was pretty cheap. He can get way more than $3 million a year and he chose to take less money just to stay with Gus Bradley. But I wanted to show how talented JC Jackson is. Let's get into some of his numbers. But before we get into these numbers, man show some support for this channel there's many ways to do that you could like this video to show some support comment on this video let us know how you like the show what do you think should the Raiders go out there and grab JC Jackson let me know in the comments and also think about becoming a member there's a link in the description you could pay a monthly fee to support this channel and it comes with a lot of perks and if we get a ton of members we can keep making content like like this full-time so JC Jackson has completed four years in the NFL this will be his fifth year in 2022 26 years old still a young guy a lot a lot younger than somebody like Casey Hayward. Imagine if you got Trayvon Mullen, J.C. Jackson, Nate Hobbs. We would be set for a long time. If we can get J.C. Jackson, re-sign Trayvon Mullen, keep Nate Hobbs for the remaining three years on his contract, you have a solid cornerback room for several years to come. So I think we should try to get this done. 2021, J.C. Jackson had an 83.0 PFF grade, eight interceptions, 12 pass breakups. That's insane. He actually calls himself Mr. INT and he says he says the Patriots need to hit up Mr. INT and get something done. 2020, pandemic years, a little weird, but hey, 70 PFF grade, a little decline, but you still get nine picks five pass breakups. The Raiders over the past few years just do not get turnovers. We do not get interceptions. We were one of the worst in the league at turnover differential. And it's because we don't have anybody like J.C. Jackson. Casey Hayward was great last year, but I believe he only had one pick the whole entire season. J.C. Jackson's had eight just last year. And then 2019, he got five picks, 68.4 coverage PFF grade, five pass breakups. And then his rookie year, you still get three picks and three pass breakups. I'd rather have picks than pass breakups, to be honest. I mean, it makes a huge impact in the game. So this guy has a solid resume. He could go to any team. If he was franchise tagged by New England, he would be roughly $17 million a year. Obviously, if you have a longer term deal, you're going to bring that cap number down. And there's ways to work with the cap. There's a lot of ways to work with the cap. I had a really good question about the cap. And, and, and here it is from Todd Clemens. It's basically, how are teams like the Cowboys and, and, and the Rams able to afford all these players? But the Raiders seem like they never can, right? And that's always been a big issue. We never have big time free agents come into this organization and you see teams like the Rams and Cowboys and you see them have all these talented players and you wonder how do they afford them how do they work with the cap well for instance check this out what they usually do is they just convert their salary cap into a bonus and spread that bonus out over several years that's the best way to do it Jalen Ramsey for example technically makes 20 million dollars a year however 10 million of that is converted into a bonus and spread out over the course of several years so the problem the problem with the Raiders is Mark Davis never wants to invest that heavily into a player. Mark Davis typically doesn't convert these salaries into bonuses and spread them out over several years.
years. The only person we did that for recently was Corey Littleton and Carl Nassib. <laughs> so, I mean, we're not really doing that with talent that we want to keep. We're, we're typically doing that with talent that are already stuck here anyway. So Carl Nassib and Corey Littleton had too much dead money and guaranteed money. So we had to convert their salary cap into bonuses because they're going to be here anyways, right? So hopefully we could invest heavily in a player and commit to them. Somebody like Max Crosby. Yeah, say he wants to make $25 million a year. Why don't we convert like $12 million of that into a bonus and, and, and spread that out over a long period of time? And then that way we can reduce the salary cap. Same thing with Derek Carr. Why don't we commit to Derek Carr and say, hey, we're going to have you for three or four years. Yeah, you're going to make $40 million a year. But let's convert about $20 million of that into a bonus and spread that out over several years. Yeah, it's going to be expensive upfront money. Money, and it's expensive in terms of guaranteed money, but you bring your salary cap down and you have a very competitive team. That's what I think we need to do. In other news, the Packers have done just exactly what I was saying. Nose tackle Kenny Clark, they've converted some of his salary cap into a bonus and added two voided years, spreading that out over several years. So they converted $13 million of Clark's compensation into a signing bonus, add two voided years, you're, you're creating $14 million in cap space right there. And the reason why I bring this up is because I want to see the Raiders do stuff like this. That, that, that's one reason. And then another reason is because... I think they're clearing money to, to keep Devontae Adams. Well, I mean, yes, they're, they're a negative $40 million in the hole. There's a couple of people that they could release to alleviate, alleviate that situation. And Kenny Clark, they're addressing that right there. But I, I want to believe Devontae Adams is going to the Raiders. And uh, I hope I'm wrong, but I think I'm right. And I think he's not coming. And I think it, th there's no indication to believe that he is. Yes, the general manager said, Oh, it's up in the air. You know, we don't want to franchise tag him. We'd rather get a long term deal. He could test free agency. He literally just laid out any possibility. He did a great way of saying nothing. That's how you say nothing. You just spell out every possibility and give no inclination that you're leaning towards any possibility. The only inclination that the GM of the Green Bay Packers uh, led us to believe was that, yes, they want a long term deal with Devontae Adams. And if they can't get one, they, they would franchise tag him. And if the franchise tag is too expensive, then yes, they'll send him to free agency but he didn't commit to any one of those positions so we still don't know what they're going to do we have until march 8th once march 8th hits we'll have a clear picture as to if Devonte adams will be available either way thanks for checking out this video man like i said remember to like this subscribe if you haven't already we got new raiders content coming out all the time this is wi-fi willie of the raiders rundown and i hope to see you on the next one